Hi guys! In this lecture, I will extend our discussion of motion in two or even in three dimensions. But I will focus on motion in a plane such as projectiles, planetary orbits, and pendulum oscillation. So we have the following topics for this video lecture. Let's start. Now, let's say we have this particle moving in a plane. It has components along the x and the y axis as shown. As the particle moves, the position vector r changes. Uh, we have here r sub 1, let's say, for time t1. And we have r sub 2 position vector for time t2. The displacement vector can therefore be expressed as vector r is equal to r sub 2 minus r sub 1. In addition, we can explicitly define the following vector quantities for this particle in 2D motion. So first, uh, we have here the position vector r. So the r vector is equal to xi hat plus yj hat. Then we have here the velocity vector, which is just the first uh, time derivative of your position vector. And it has uh, components along the x and the y axis. Note that we have here a graph at the lower left. So the velocity vector here is directed tangent to the path of the particle. Last, we have here the expression for the acceleration vector, which is just the time derivative of the velocity vector, or this is just the second time derivative of the position vector. Next, I will present the equations used in constant acceleration motion in two dimensions. One thing that I want you to remember is to always use proper subscripts to indicate if it is a quantity associated with the x or y motion, just to avoid confusion. Let us assume that both a sub x and a sub y accelerations are constant. Thus, we have the following. So first, we have the position uh, vector for the x as shown. Then we have here the velocity vector uh, v sub x. Then we have another expression for the velocity vector. Uh, this time this is uh, dependent on the displacement x. So same with the vertical counterpart of this uh, vectors. We have here the position vector y, the velocity v sub y, and v sub y squared, uh, which is dependent on the displacement y. We can also write these equations into a more general vector form as shown here. So we have vec position vector r, then we have here the velocity, a general form, and of course with the assumption that our acceleration here is constant. Note that uh, we should use the proper sign convention here, where in a motion to the right is positive for x and motion going up as positive for y. We now consider an object flying through air with no other forces present except for gravity and air resistance. So this is the scenario. But as a first approximation to simplify our equation, we will neglect the effect of air and the possible variation in the value of g which is the acceleration due to gravity. If we neglect air resistance, then there, are, or there is no acceleration along the horizontal, or the a sub x is equal to zero, while the acceleration in the y direction is only due to gravity. And therefore, uh, a sub y is equal to negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Another convenient thing to do is to assume the initial position x0 and y0 equal to 0 or it is at the origin. Let us start with the expression for the initial velocity. So along the x, uh, we have here v not x, And along the y direction, we have here v not y. And using simple trigonometry, we have the following expression. Then, using our constant acceleration formulas for two dimension, we can have the following important expressions for projectile motion. So first, for the x, uh, given that a sub x is equal to 0, 
Therefore, we have this uh, here, the velocity along the x, which is equal to v0 cosine theta, and this is constant for this uh, first approximation, projectile motion. Then, for the displacement, uh, or should, should I say, the position vector along the horizontal, we have this expression. Now, for the acceleration along the y, so we have a sub y is equal to negative g. And we have this expression for the velocity for the y, which is equal to v naught sine theta minus g t. And for the position vector along the vertical, we have this expression, given that we know that the acceleration is equal to negative g. From our equation for the position x, we can get an expression for the time t. So we have t is equal to x over v naught cosine theta. Using this equation, we can substitute it to the variable t in the y position equation to obtain this parabolic equation in terms of the variable x. This is a parabolic equation that passes through the origin, wherein x naught and y naught are equal to zero. One important feature of projectile motion is that the horizontal component of the motion, as observed here in my graph, uh, is independent of the vertical motion. We have a constant speed along the horizontal, given that air resistance is negligible, while we have a varying vertical speed due to the acceleration g. Note that at the peak, uh, as shown here in my drawing, we have only the vy. So vy here is equal to 0. So we only have v naught x uh, as the velocity vector. Now, let us answer this problem to have a better understanding of projectile motion. So we have here a small ball is heat at an angle of 30 degrees, let's say, above the horizontal direction with a speed of 22 meters per second. And the letter A here, so calculate the peak height of the ball in projectile. So that's the first thing that we will uh, calculate. Then letter B, calculate the horizontal range of the ball. So we have here the range, then we have here the height. Note that at the peak, peak height, we know that v sub y is equal to 0, then we have this initial velocity. So this one is our initial velocity. Uh, we can get the components, so along the x, this one, and along the y. So for, for the v naught x, we have here 19.05 meters per second, while for the v naught y, we have here 11 meters per second. So next, at the peak, uh, we know this or we know that v sub y is equal to 0. And therefore, using this equation or expression for the velocity, we can get dt, the time. So we have here the time to reach the peak, which is equal to 1.12 seconds. Then using this time, we can substitute it to this uh, equation to get the height h, or in this case, we have y, uh, which is which refers to the peak height of the ball in projectile and therefore we will get this value which is equal to 6.17 meters so to answer letter b uh, when the ball returns to the ground as illustrated here in my drawing so we have here uh, y is equal to zero during that time and we can calculate therefore using that uh, initial value y is equal to zero the total time in the air, capital T, as shown. We will arrive with this equation, and using the known variables, uh, we get the value of capital T. So capital T is equal to 2.24 uh, seconds, as shown. Using this expression and the value for the total time in air, we can get the, or we can calculate the range R of our projectile. So we multiply first uh, capital T with the x component of the initial velocity as shown here. And we will get this expression uh, given that we know this expression for capital T. We can also rewrite this 
range formula using uh, this uh, trigonometry expression. So we have here 2 sine theta, cosine theta is equal to sine 2 theta. Thus, we have this value of range, uh, or this is a more simplified uh, expression for range, and we have this value of 42.77 meters. Given an initial velocity, we can see that the maximum range results when sine 2 theta is at maximum as well. And uh, this is at maximum if 2 theta is equal to 90 degrees because sine 90 gives a value of 1. This theta, therefore, should be equal to 45 degrees to have a maximum range given this simple projectile scenario. In addition, if we have two angles of elevation, let's say alpha and beta, it will result to the same range value if alpha and beta are complementary angles, which means they add up to 90 degrees. Now let's go to the topic of uniform circular motion. If we have an object uh, that moves in a circle, shown here in the drawing, with constant speed v, we can define a case of uniform circular motion. Note that the direction of velocity here is changing, shown, while the magnitude of the velocity vector is constant. And uh, here, we consider an acceleration associated with the change in direction of the velocity vector. And we will call this the centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration. In the figure shown, we consider position vectors R sub 1 and R sub 2. And the velocity vector V sub 1 and V sub 2 respectively. The vector V here is tangent to the circle as shown. When R moves with angle theta, the velocity vector moves through the same angle. Thus, if the delta theta or the change in the angle is very small, we can express this uh, short side here, the delta S, of the triangle which is equal to the arc length. And if this change in theta is in regions, we can express uh, delta S is equal to R delta theta as shown or the change in your angle. Now if this uh, two isosceles triangle, one for the position vector while another for the velocity and they are similar triangles, then we can express the following ratios for their sides. So we have delta V over V is equal to delta S over R and this is equal to V delta T over R. And therefore uh, we can have this expression and this is the centripetal acceleration uh, it is directed toward the center of the circle okay so last thing for this video lecture is a discussion briefly of the relative motion one must refer to a frame of reference when trying to describe uh, a motion examples are surface of the earth floor of a certain room, or a moving train, let's say. One technique in solving this problem is to label the tip of the velocity vector with the symbol that represents the moving object, while the tail of the velocity vector with the symbol of the reference frame. We have now uh, this short problem. So we have here a river is flowing due to the east at 6 kilometers per hour. A boat can move through the river at 10 kilometers per hour. Now, if the boat is traveling north across the river, what is the magnitude and direction of its velocity with respect to the earth? So now we, we will write the following uh, vector. So we have here the vector v of the river with res or the velocity vector v of the river with respect to the earth. Then we have here the velocity vector of the boat with respect to the river shown this direction then we want to find this one the velocity vector of the boat with respect to the earth and to get the value of this vector uh, we can just uh, do simple uh, trigonometry and we will get this magnitude of the velocity vector vbe is equal to 11.66 kilometers per hour 
And for the theta, which refers to this theta, uh, we will get a value of 30.96 degrees uh, east of north. And that's it for this video lecture. Thank you. Hi, if you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, GT Academia. See you in the next video.